to calm their passion with the words of age, slow from his seat arose the Pylian sage, experienced Nestor in persuasion skilled, words sweet as honey from his lips distilled. Two generations now had passed away, wise by his rules and happy by his sway. Two ages o'er his native realm he reigned, and now the example of the third remained. All viewed with awe the venerable man, who thus with mild benevolence began. What shame! What woe is this to Greece! What joy to Troy's proud monarch and the friends of Troy! That adverse gods commit to stern debate the best, the bravest of the Grecian state. Young as ye are, this youthful heat restrain, nor think you Nestor's years and wisdom vain. A godlike race of heroes once I knew, such as no more these aged eyes shall view. Lives there a chief to match Perithous's fame, Dryas the bold, or Cenius's deathless name? Theseus, endued with more than mortal might, or Polyphemus, like the gods in fight. With these of old to toils of battle bred, in early youth my hardy days I led, fired with the thirst with vir which virtuous envy breeds, and smit with love of honorable deeds. Strongest of men, they pierced the mountain boar, ranged the wild deserts red with monsters' gore, and from their hills the shaggy centaurs tore. Yet these with soft persuasive arts I swayed, when Nestor spoke, they listened and obeyed. If in my youth even these esteemed me wise, do you, young warriors, hear my age advise? Atrides, seize not on the beauteous slave, that prize the Greeks by common suffrage gave. Nor thou, Achilles, treat our prince with pride, let kings be just and sovereign power preside. Thee, the first honors of the war adorn, like gods in strength and of a goddess born, him Awful majesty exalts above the powers of the earth and sceptred sons of Jove. Let both unite with well-consenting mind. So shall authority with strength be joined. Leave me, O king, to calm Achilles' rage. Rule thou thyself as more advanced in age. Forbid it, gods. Achilles should be lost, the pride of Greece and bulwark of our host. This said he ceased. The king of men replies, Thy years are awful, and thy words are wise, but that imperious, that unconquered soul, no laws can limit, no, no respect control. Before his pride must his superiors fall, his word the law, and he the lord of all. Him must our hosts, our chiefs, ourselves obey? What king can bear a rival in his sway? Grant that the gods his matchless force have given, has foul reproach a privilege from heaven? Here on the monarch's speech Achilles broke, and furious thus, and interrupting spoke, Tyrant, I well deserve thy galling chain to live thy slave and still to serve in vain. Should I submit to each unjust decree? Command thy vassals, but command not me. Seize on Briseis, whom the Grecians doomed my prize of war, yet tamely see resumed and seas secure. No more Achilles draws his conquering sword in any woman's cause. The gods command me to forgive the past, but let this first invasion be the last. For know thy blood, when next thou darest invade, shall stream in vengeance on my reeking blade. At this they ceased. The stern debate expired. The chiefs in sullen majesty retired. Achilles with Patroclus took his way, where near his tents his hollow vessels lay. Meanwhile, Atrides, launched with numerous oars, a well-rigged ship for Christ's sacred shores. High on the deck was fair Chryseis placed, and sage Ulysses with the conduct graced. Safe in her sides the hecatomb they stowed, and then swiftly sailing cut the liquid road. The host to expiate next the king prepares, with pure lustrations and with solemn prayers. Washed by the briny wave, the pious train are cleansed, and cast the ablution in the main. Along the shore whole hecatombs were laid, and bulls and goats to Phoebus' altars paid. The sable, sable fumes in curling spires arise, and waft their grateful odors to the skies. The army thus in sacred rites engaged, Atrides still with deep resentment raged. To wait his will, two sacred heralds stood, Talthibius and Eurybates the good. 
Haste to the fierce Achilles' tent, he cries. Bear, thence bear Briseis as our royal prize. Submit he must, or if they will not part, ourselves and arms shall tear her from his heart. The unwilling heralds act their lord's commands. Pensive, they walk along the barren sands. Arrived, the hero in his tent they find, with gloomy aspect on his arm reclined. At awful distance long they silence stand, loath to advance and speak their hard command. Decent confusion. This the godlike man perceived, and thus with accent mild began. With leave and honor enter our abodes, ye sacred ministers of men and gods. I know your message, by constraint you came. Not you, but your imperious lord I blame. Patroclus, haste, the fear Briseis bring. Conduct my captive to the haughty king. But witness, heralds, and proclaim my vow. Witness to the gods above and men below. But first and loudest, to your prince declare that lawless tyrant whose commands you bear. Unmoved as death, Achilles shall remain, though prostrate Greece shall bleed at every vein. The raging chief in frantic, frantic passion lost, blind to himself and useless to his host, unskilled to judge the future by the past, in blood and slaughter shall repent at last. Patroclus now the unwilling beauty brought, she in soft sorrows and in pensive thought, passed silent as the heralds held her hand, and of, and of look ba- back, slow moving o'er the strand. Not so his loss the fierce Achilles bore, but sad retiring to the sounding shore, o'er the wild margin of the deep he hung, that kindred deep from whence his mother sprung, there bathed in tears of anger and disdain, thus loud lamented to the stormy main. O parent goddess, since in early bloom thy son must fall by too severe a doom, sure to so short a race of glory born, great Jove and justice should this span adorn, Honor and fame, at least the thunderer owed, and ill he pays the promise of a god. If yon proud monarch thus thy son defies, obscures my glories and resumes my prize. Far from the deep recesses of the main, where aged ocean holds his watery reign, the goddess mother heard. The waves divide, and like a mist she rose above the tide, beheld him mourning on the naked shores, and thus the sorrows of his soul explores. Why grieves my son? Thy anguish let me share. Reveal the cause and trust the parent's care. He, deeply sighing, said, Ah, to tell my woe is but to mention what too well you know. From Thebe, sacred to Apollo's name, Eetion's realm, our conquering army came, with treasure loaded and triumphant spoils, whose just division crowned the soldiers' toils, but bright Chryseis heavenly prize was led by votes selected to the general's bed. The priest of Phoebus sought by gifts to gain his beauteous daughter from the victor's chain. The fleet he reached, and lowly bending down, held forth the scepter and the laurel crown, entreating all. But chief implored for grace the brother kings of Atreus' royal race. The generous Greeks their joint consent declare, the priest to reverence and release the fair. Not so Atreides, he with wanted pride the sire insulted and his gifts denied. The insulted sire his god's peculiar care to Phoebus prayed, and Phoebus heard the prayer. A dreadful plague ensues, the avenging darts incessant fly and pierce the Grecian hearts. A prophet then inspired by heaven arose and points the crime and thence derives the woes. Myself the first the assembled chiefs inclined to avert the vengeance of the power divine. Then rising in his wrath, the monarch stormed, incensed he threatened, and his threats performed. The fair Chryseis to her sire was sent, with offered gifts to make the god relent. But now he seized Briseis' heavenly charms, and on, of my valor's prize defrauds my arms, defrauds the votes of all the Grecian tra- train, and service faith and justice plead in vain. <laughs>